Welcome to Populous The Beginning. In this episode of Overpowered's Path to Overpowered, we're going to talk about two things. Firstly, we will talk about Populous and how to play it. Secondly, we'll talk about specific things you need to know while playing the game, such as how to ally or talk. Populous The Beginning is a real-time strategy game, and so it follows the same core tenet as most strategy games, build a base and crush your opponent. What makes Populous unique is this magnificent woman here. She is the Shaman. For as long as she has followers alive, she cannot be permanently killed. She is capable of unleashing incredible destruction upon her enemies. If you've been thrown into your very first game of multiplayer, you may notice a lack of a few things. Firstly, there is no flyby to guide you or show you the layout of the level. And if you've only played the original campaign, the other thing you'll be lacking is time. Because multiplayer is a mad rush to get established as quickly as possible to increase your mana flow and set up your defenses. With your enemy shamans unleashed onto the map, time is of the essence. First, here we have the minimap. It's not very useful unless you're playing 1.5, where the minimap has actually been fixed and is a toggleable feature. For 1.1 games, just assume it doesn't work. You can accidentally click on it to annoyingly zoom elsewhere though. There are three panels in Populous the Beginning. The Buildings panel, the Spell panel, and the Followers panel. Below those panels are the Population Toggler, the Shaman Portrait, Shaman's Life, and Enemy Tribes. Below that are your Population Values. This bar here shows you the maximum population of your tribe when you hover over it, whilst the number it shows beneath are the amount of followers you currently have in total. Next to that are your total number of Braves, Warriors, Fire Warriors, Preachers, and then Spies. Lastly, this confusing block of lines below is your Spell Charge Rate. It's an indication of how efficient you are being with your mana charge many things at once and watch it fall. This is considered bad in Populous the Beginning. Everything below that changes on the panel that you have selected. But first I just wanted to explain the Population Toggler. It is a very useful thing that basically toggles whether the population values shown are for what you can see within your screen space or what you can see across the entire world. It can be toggled by clicking on it or by pushing L. It's a great way to select only fire warriors relevant to a particular shaman attack, for example. Selecting the buildings panel will show you the buildings that you can build. Huts increase the maximum allowed population of your tribe, so gameplay is centered around building as many of these as possible. Guard towers provide a build radius for you to build a new settlement. They can also be garrisoned by a follower or even the shaman herself providing different effects. A fire warrior will shoot from the tower with increased range and deal additional damage. A warrior will fight to defend your territory and provide a unique bell sound that allows you to use call to arms, a feature that nobody actually uses. Preachers can continue to tell their stories from within the safety of a tower's walls with additional preaching range, and spies will uncloak other spies and hide your base from worldview. The next four buildings are all training huts. They are the Warrior Training Hut, Temple, Spy Training Hut, and Fire Warrior Training Hut respectively, and each of them allow you to train their unit type. Note that although the temple does not follow the same naming scheme as the other buildings, it functions the same and it allows you to train preachers. Lastly in the buildings panel we have the boathouse and a balloon hut. The boathouse allows you to build boats for four wood with each boat being able to hold five followers, but it can only traverse water. The balloon hut allows you to build balloons for three wood that can only hold two followers but balloons are not restricted and can thus go anywhere. This little icon here is a guard post. It puts down a cute little campfire that only you can see. 
You can use guard posts to set up patrol paths for your troops, but we don't do this in Populous Reincarnated because the control and alt keys pressed together provide exactly the same function. The spells panel allows you to manage the spells of your shaman. You can right click any spell to begin charging it or stop charging it. A blue orb means you have a charge of that spell while red ones mean you have a temporary charge. You charge the blue ones yourself and you can get red ones from stoneheads if you want an easy way to remember it. You can control and right click a spell to charge only that spell whilst shift and right click will toggle everything on or everything off. I'm not going to explain every spell here, that'll be another video. You can cast a spell by clicking the spell and then clicking where in the world you want it to cast. Your shaman will walk there if it's not in range. You can hold control to keep the spell selected after you cast it. Notice that by hovering the spell you can see the spells range from the shaman's location. This is a great way of getting an indication of whether the enemies can hit you with their spells or not. The Followers panel is a very important panel that does not get used enough by people starting out in Populous. It provides a visual representation of your entire tribe, it allows you to see who you have selected and also what they are doing. From top to bottom, the Follower panel goes like this. This is how many of each follower type you have selected currently. You can click any of these numbers to actually deselect those followers. The next row is Idle Followers. These are followers of each type who are currently freeloading, standing around and doing nothing. Left clicking any of these idle icons will select some of those idle followers. Control clicking will select 5 while shift and left click will select all of them. These are your housed followers. It allows you to see who is currently contributing to the growth of your tribe by being within a hut. As you can use Fire Warriors in Huts defensively, you'll expect to see both Braves and Fire Warriors make up this number. Lastly, this value is your Working Followers. Working Followers are followers who are patrolling, building, or fighting. The most important panels that you need to know about the Idle and Deselect panels. Whilst we do use all of these panels to some extent in Populous, those two that I've just listed are the ones that we use the most. The bottom two bits you don't need to know because we don't play with vehicles in the multiplayer meta, but they represent followers in vehicles, with the top of the bottom two being boats and the bottom of the bottom two being balloons. It just represents how many followers you have in those vehicles. Now that we've gone over the followers panel, it's a perfect time to actually go over the followers themselves. There are five types of followers in Populous the Beginning. The Brave who is the only follower that can construct buildings and is the follower that is produced by huts. The warrior, who makes up the backbone of your military. He does not take additional damage from fire warriors in towers and he is also not knocked back by fire warrior shots. A warrior's high HP pool and impressive fight power means that they can even make short work of a shaman. Fire Warriors are the only ranged unit in the game. Their shots deal damage from a distance and being shot by more than one at once can send shamans on a magical journey to the grave. Their knockback is effective and they are a strong defensive unit. They are the natural counter to Preachers. Preachers, or Priests, are my personal favourite unit in the game. They are madmen who love your shaman so much they will permanently spout their rhetoric about how great you are, even when nobody is around to hear them. Units caught in a preacher's range will stop and listen to his stories before eventually being convinced to switch sides. As an overzealous believer of your shaman, he is immune to the words of enemy preachers. Preachers can also not attack buildings, but their ability to stop people in their tracks makes them the natural counter to the ever so powerful warriors. Lastly, the spy is the master of mischief and the only follower that actually gets weaker after being trained. They are absolutely appalling in combat but can set any structure ablaze whilst disguised as an enemy brave. To disguise a spy, select the spy and left click on any of the tribe's icons. His little loincloth will magically change to represent the colour he's disguised as. 
to uncloak an enemy spy, right-click him. If you're lazy about it, put a spy in a tower to do that automatically over a large radius. The only other chap you need to know about is this little legend. He is a wild man. He lives out his days eating, drinking, and burping in blissful ignorance of the wars going on around him. Tag him with the convert spell, however, and he'll be so impressed by your display of sparkly lights that he'll join your tribe as a brave. All that is left to explain to you now are the multiplayer-only functions. There's only a couple of them, but I shall explain them quickly. Tribe icons that are pushed in represent an ally. Shift-click an icon except your own to change alliances. Note the other tribe must do the same, or they can take advantage of it. While you're in-game, press M to open the chat window. You must select the icon specifically to speak to only your ally, otherwise your message can be read by all. In 1.5, a separate hotkey, known as K, will be team-only chat. And that is all you need to know about Populous the Beginning. With the game explained in a high detail, you are now ready to play. <laughs>